Well, good morning and welcome to our morning prayer for uh, Wednesday, May 27th. I am thankful that you are with us. Um, please make sure that you grab uh, Bibles and we will begin momentarily. Uh, and as we begin, we begin with a moment of quiet as we settle our hearts and our minds on the worship of the living God. So let us begin. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh depth of wealth, wisdom, and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are God's judgments, how untraceable are God's ways, the source, guide, and goal of all that is, to God be the glory forever. In our first psalm this morning will be Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> psalm 63 verses 1 through 8. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Well, as we begin this day anew, uh, so we are reminded of our new life in Jesus Christ. Uh, we are reminded of our new life um, in our baptisms. And so as we gather this morning, we gather giving thanks for the gift of our baptism. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And our next psalm this morning will be Psalm 99. Uh, psalm 99. <clears throat> The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. For you have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Our next psalm this morning will be Psalm uh, 147, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. <clears throat> and our Old Testament reading this morning comes out of uh, the prophet Isaiah. Um, and we'll be reading Isaiah chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Uh, Isaiah chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. And this has us at the beginning um, of Isaiah's uh, prophecy, Isaiah's book. Um, in the first few chapters, basically talks about how uh, Israel has fallen away from following God. Um, uh, and it talks about the, the issues, the judgment that will be coming upon um, Israel because of their inability to, uh, to follow God, to honor their end of the covenant. Um, it talks about God um, judging and um, bringing... Uh, destruction upon the land as uh, judgment of what Israel and uh, how God's people have acted. <clears throat> and so the first couple of chapters talks about that, particularly chapter 3. Um, in, in verse uh, chapter 4 begins um, the first verse, still some of that same language of judgment and destruction. Then there's a switch at verse 2. Uh, and uh, God begins talking about not judgment, but um, uh, a, a remnant. Uh, he begins talking about um, what he's going to do to bring the people back to himself. <clears throat> and so Isaiah writes in Isaiah 4, verse 2, In that day the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the survivors in Israel. Those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy, all who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. The Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. He will cleanse the bloodstains from Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. Then the Lord will create over all, the, all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble there a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. Over all the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter and shade from the heat of the day and a refuge and hiding place from the storm and rain. <clears throat> um, again, this, uh, this is a judgment of God coming as... Um, uh, after his sort of long patience with the people, uh, despite their um, not following the covenant. Uh, but really, it's what is more important isn't necessarily the judgment, but it's the, um, the correction, the bringing the people back to Yahweh. Um, and the reality that uh, the goal is to, to provide a place of refuge, right? Um, pro provide a place of safety for. Uh, God's people and for all people. Um, and then that imagery of this uh, place of this branch of the Lord and this uh, using vineyard imagery as a metaphor for the people of God goes into chapter 5 and it talks about um, how Israel is to be uh, this vineyard for God. Um, and that, of course, language gets picked up by Jesus in John's Gospel um, talking about God being the the uh, the gardener, the vine dresser, Jesus being the true vine, and all of us being branches grafted into that vine. Um, and by being grafted into that vine, we um, can live fruitful lives uh, that give glory to God. And so you see this imagery from Isaiah and the prophets coming forward into the New Testament and Jesus utilizing that to describe our relationship, not only with God, but with each other in the world. 
um, our New Testament reading comes out of uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 16. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And when we know then, we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And our gospel reading comes out of uh, Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8. And we'll be reading verses 28 to 34. So Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 8, verses, oh my goodness, <laughs> too many numbers this morning. Um, Matthew chapter 8. 28 to 34. So Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 to 34. <clears throat> okay. Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 28 to 34. And when he arrived at the other side of the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. <clears throat> this is one of those stories that kind of uh, highlights Jesus' authority uh, and sovereignty before he even ascends back to the Father. Right, um, the, the Jesus and the disciples have crossed the Sea of Galilee from the west side, which has just primarily uh, a Jewish side, uh, over to the east side, which was settled by kind of Greco-Roman um, uh, citizens as uh, first the Greek Empire and then the Roman Empire came through, um, and so Jesus crosses the the lake into this. Uh, Gentile area, this non-Jewish area, which you can tell by the fact that there's a herd of pigs, right? Um, and Jesus demonstrates his authority over um, creation yesterday in calming the storm, right? He speaks, the wind and the waves listen. 
Uh, and now here we are on this other side in this Gentile place um, in God showing that his uh, authority and sovereignty extends um, to all reaches of the world, to all peoples, uh, and not only to, to people, but to um, spirits as well, right? These two demon-possessed men asking uh, and proclaiming, what do you want with us, son of God? Um, have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Right? There's this reality that they know who Jesus is, that they know Jesus is uh, sovereign and king over all, uh, and that they are under his uh, authority, um, <clears throat> that they cannot do anything that uh, Jesus does not allow, uh, and that they must listen to him. So in this season of uh, ascension, as we head into Pentecost, it is this reminder that uh, Jesus is truly sovereign, um, that he is in control, uh, and that all things whether things in creation or uh, things in spiritual realms, listen to him. Well, and so as we gather together, we are, um, as Paul talks about in Ephesians, we are gathered together and united by uh, God's Holy Spirit, the one spirit that brings us into the body of Christ, which is the church. And so whether we are separated by time, whether we are separated by distance, uh, whether we are separated by sickness, the, uh, the Holy Spirit unites us all together into that one body of Christ. Uh, and so we gather together as uh, a people united by the Holy Spirit, even if we are separated um, <clears throat> by uh, quarantine. And so let us lift our hearts, our minds, and our souls together as we are united by the Holy Spirit into one in prayer. Let us pray. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. We thank you for those who teach and those who learn. <clears throat> be with schools, be with teachers, be with parents, be with kids uh, <clears throat> as the end of the school year approaches, as, uh, as kids finish off um, what will be an odd and a memorable uh, school year, I imagine. Um, give them all strength to finish well. Uh, especially as the weather is nice and the itch to be uh, outside and playing grows. Um, also be with all of the seniors, whether they be high school, college seniors who are graduating this year and graduating in a way that is uh, unexpected and unanticipated. Um, we thank you for the community of faith in your church. We thank you for reconciliation in our relationships. We thank you for all gifts of healing and forgiveness. And people of God, for what else do we give thanks this morning? And merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe, 
We pray for safe, clean, and renewable energy. We pray for those who are lonely and forgotten. We pray for those from whom we are estranged. We pray for the courage to claim your promise in Christ. And people of God, for what else do we pray? Pray for those who mourn um, lost or sick loved ones uh, and who must do so apart because of quarantine. We pray that you would give comfort to those um, who simply want to be with uh, those that they love, who want to say goodbye. Um, we pray that your spirit would give them peace and would give them comfort. We also pray that you would help uh, all of us to um, to mourn and to grieve in the midst of this um, extended season of coronavirus uh, as we sort of fall into a, a sense of new, of a new normal in which uh, it's hard to make any sort of plans because no one really knows what will happen in the weeks and the months to come. Um, pray that you would... Um, Help us to talk about and to heal and to work through the grief that we have um, as we mourn the loss of um, vacations, uh, trips, sports, um, time with family, um, you know, the, the freedoms that we have normally had to sort of move from place to place as we mourn the ability to plan and to schedule, um, Lord, we pray that you would help us uh, to grieve well, um, to give ourselves grace when uh, our tempers feel short um, and our nerves feel frazzled and rattled. Uh, this is an unprecedented time for all of us we pray that we would lean into you and your spirit, uh, that we would lean into each other in the church uh, as we seek to faithfully respond um, and as we seek to, uh, to faithfully um, work towards the wholeness that you have intended for us. And God of grace, you cause the sun to rise and you chase away the shadows of death. Each day you promise resurrection, that we may be born again to new life and overcome all that would hurt or destroy. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may be alive again with the power and the peace of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And hear us as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, as we prepare to go from here, uh, go with this blessing and an invitation to join us uh, this evening for Worship Wednesday at 6.30. Um, and uh, yeah, as we go from here, um, go with this blessing. So far as it depends upon us, let us live peaceably with all. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you this day. Peace be with you. Stay safe and stay sane, friends, and we'll see you again tomorrow.